Hey, I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. I almost said bonus edition, but it's a regular edition. Just an, just an edition. Just an edition. Jam and I have not been together recording in three weeks. That's right. Because he was out of town with his fam. And it was I wasn't out of town that long, but the way we record made it where we couldn't do it the week I got back. So It was the timing, yeah. Yeah, yep. So, but here we are. Yep. And before we start on this episode that I haven't told Jim the topic yet, and I can't wait to tell him. It's been hard. I've almost told him several times. I want to shout out Nellie S., one of our new Patreon supporters. Oh, yes. She actually joined last month and came to our coffee hour that we do with our H Bonder tier. And so I got to meet her and she is really fun to talk to. And so she's our new Patreon. So shout out to her. This episode is dedicated to you, Nellie. And if you are someone who's thought about it a couple of times, but just hasn't really gone exploring it, go check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash chem for your life. And if you become a patron, we've got a few different uh, tiers, but there's cool things like our coffee hour. And uh, we even have like a merch discount code. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have, we share cool updates on there and stuff like that. We'd love to have you if you want to. If you want, you don't have to. But just if you want, <laughs> if you want to make chemistry accessible to even more people, that's what we say. Mm-hmm. Okay. So are you ready? <laughs> Maybe I've built it up too much. This, uh, this episode is going to be lame. I think I'm ready, but I like to, I like to sort of save surprises. So could you tell me what the topic is after we finish recording? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, actually, when you walked into your house, your son said this out loud and I was like, ah, we're going to talk about popcorn. Oh, nice. Popcorn and why? how does popcorn pop and all that stuff. Who messaged us about this the other day? Did someone message us about it? Yes. Oh, no. I didn't see it. Was it in an email or on Instagram? What a great question. I know. Okay, well, if that was you, I didn't see it. And actually, I took my inspiration from a little kid friend of ours who... Oh, was it like a person in our in our real life, maybe? I think so. I just, I'm just not positive. You start mm. talking and I'll, if I figure it out live, then I will tell us. Okay. Tell <laughs> okay. So um, a little kid friend of ours who has since moved out of the country. So you probably know who she is, Jam. Yes, I do. She was talking to her mom and her mom, she said she wanted to grow a popcorn plant and her mom was trying to explain, you know, that popcorn comes from kernels. Did yes. you figure it out? I figured it out. Who is it? It's our friend, Joey Hatfield. <gasps> Joey, what is this question? Can you read it? I'll read it. This is from Joey Hatfield. Um, my former roommate, uh, current friend, friend of the show, and uh, he drew the chem heads uh, thing and yeah, a few other things. He's He's great. And he's also Maple's dad, the dog that we talk about. Yes. Um, What is happening when a popcorn kernel is heated up? (gasps) Is the heat just causing the internal structure to expand or is the heat causing chemical changes that make or combine something to make the the, the foamy popcorn-y stuff? (laughs) Oh my gosh. I can't believe I didn't find that. I think it stuck out to me like because I saw an email from Joey and then I was like, oh, this is, this is to our chemistry for your life inbox. Yeah. I kind of thought it was like an email to me about something. Who mm-hmm. knows what? And then I was like, oh, oh, and it's pop, it's, a, it's a good question. Popcorn, cool. But I just marked it as unread <laughs> so you'd see it. But we were behind. The number of times that has happened makes me think that it must be in my subconscious that someone asked it. <laughs> and then I'm like, that is a good question, you know? Yeah. But I was thinking about, okay, so our, our small friend, a little kid friend, I think she's maybe like three now, maybe two at the time of this question. Uh-huh. She uh, asked her mom if she could grow a popcorn plant. And her mom was trying to explain, you know, that like that popcorn kernels come from corn. And then she's like, wait, like where is our popcorn kernels just regular corn? Like what's up with that? (laughs) Uh And so then she messaged me about that. And that was kind of my inspiration. Felt like the perfect episode because we've been on kind of a food trend, butter, you know, I'm like popcorn just fits right in. Totally. And it's summer and it's really gotten to be summer here. Oh yeah, very much so. So just the other day, my husband and I were like movie night, popcorn. Like we want to do a movie night where we go get popcorn and actually yeah. buy the movie snacks, you know, and uh-huh. like make it like a movie theater in our house, you know? 100%. And recently you went to the movie theater. Yep. 
So I I just felt like it's time for popcorn. Yeah. Melissa keeps tabs on me, by the way, just to make sure I'm okay. That's, <laughs> That's why she knew. That's not true. <laughs> uh, well, uh, like I keep tabs on your kids yeah. while you're at the movies. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's a great idea. I love this question. And also, um, I have a video that I, so we make popcorn in a pot, you know, on the stove, mm-hmm. which you've experienced many times and you also do. Mm-hmm. Um, Did I learn that from y'all? This is, <laughs> Maybe so. this is one of my favorite, um, paradoxes it's like a bootstrap paradox sort of if you know what that is so my wife is convinced that melissa taught her how to make <laughs> popcorn on the stove melissa is multiple times said exactly what she just said a second ago where she's pretty sure that my wife taught her they are both pretty sure the other one taught them and neither think that they're the one that already knew it and that's not possible. It could have been, you know what? I could have learned it from like when I was in college uh, or like um, I did an internship with our ministry and our friend Autumn, yes. Autumn Priestley, uh-huh. she could have. Yep. She could have taught me. That sort of sounds familiar, but honestly, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? It could have, I feel like that it seems like something I would have learned from y'all, but maybe I did teach you and then that's why I associate it with you. That, that is hilarious that I did it when you're about to explain I know, what I, I do. And I told somebody that exact story like two weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, it's one of my favorite, you know, little paradoxes. It's like somebody <laughs> had to be the originator of this information and yet neither of y'all know. But Honestly. what I was going to start saying is I have tried to get like good slow-mo videos through the glass of the lid nice. watching the popcorn pop. And sometimes I've been able to do it pretty good. I'll have to look back and see if any of them are like good enough to share. But it is fascinating. But it still doesn't really tell you what's happening. No. It just, it you, seeing it slower does help it make a little bit more sense, mm-hmm. but not at the molecular level. Yeah. No, not on the molecular level. So I had no, no guesses, honestly, about what happened until I started to research it. I will say we've moved to, we have this like silicone bowl uh-huh. that you, has like a little lid and you just put a little oil with the kernels in there and then you could do it in the microwave. I've heard about this. You told me about that. I like it. Um, but if you just don't want one more thing in your kitchen, it collapses down, you know? Nice. But if you just don't want one more thing in your kitchen, you could just do it on the stove. Yeah, right. But it's less likely to burn, I feel like. In the- yeah. Like, I'm not as likely to forget about it. Right, right, right. So, that's what we do. So, but we're, we're pretty much popcorn purists in this, in this podcast. We don't buy the microwave pre-seasoned bags anymore. Yeah, we still have sometimes, but because, probably because of kettle corn being easier to oh, make corn. that way. I don't make kettle corn, so that makes sense. That's what M really likes. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, I'm super into this, and I can't wait to find out. Yay, I'm so happy. It just felt like a happy episode, a summery episode, light, maybe because popcorn's light. <laughs> yeah, summer blockbusters. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's what we usually kind of associate with, like the big movies coming And out. Jam and I did a soda run before yep. the- episode so it's like that just feels like summer yeah it does feel like summer it does okay so here we go this is one of those episodes where we're gonna apply actually a lot of chemistry lessons you've already learned okay so i don't think you'll learn any new chemistry today i don't think you will i think maybe some of our listeners who are just hopping in this might be one of their first episodes maybe that they'll definitely learn new chemistry I think we can do quick summaries, but I'll also reference back to some of the first episodes we talked about these concepts in if people want to go back and listen. Okay, cool. So we're going to talk about, you know, how do all corns pop? Why does popcorn pop at all? What's the white stuff in popcorn? And I know you're surprised, but it's a lot of chemistry. And you're sure? I'm sure. (laughs) And it's weird when there's like that one in a million time that it's actually chemistry. You know, most of it's not, but. Okay. So I feel like the easiest way to start, and I'm going to kind of give you like a quick overview and then we'll dive deeper into the molecular level. Okay. But an easy way to start is to imagine a popcorn kernel and then imagine zooming into the popcorn kernel so you can see inside it. And what's inside the popcorn kernel is ultimately a seed. And like a lot of other seeds, they come with the nutrients they need to keep the plant alive until it's able to get nutrients from its surroundings. So there's like, you know, a little plant, a baby plant in there surrounded by all the starch that would feed the plant until it could get nutrients from its surrounding. And starch is essentially a polymer 
made mostly of sugar that feeds the plant. Okay. This is an easy way to think of it. And then there's also water and then maybe some air in empty space. Okay, so that's a quick overview. Okay. And it's all encapsulated in a strong outer layer of cellulose. Okay. Okay, so it's a nice, you know, enclosed thing that has starch. That's the these are the big players. Starch, a little bit of empty space, and a little bit of water in there. Okay. Com- closed into a cellulose container. So just based off of that knowledge and what you already know about chemistry, do you have any guesses about what happens when you heat that up? Um, well, when you heat a closed container, it's a bomb. That's right. And so you've got a closed up thing. And if you're going to put energy into something and it, the molecules start getting excited. It's heating up. They're wanting to move around a lot mm-hmm. and spread out. If they can't, they will just continue to try and pressure will increase inside until it can or until, until it can burst open or until the whatever's, trying, whatever's increasing the energy stops doing that and it yes. can go back down. Yeah, perfect. Yes, so that idea is called, it's, pro, it's like thermal expansion, but also oh, right, as you right. increase temperature, you increase pressure. Yeah. One of the first episodes we talked about thermal expansion is, um, we recently did a re-release of it, but on our episode about um, sea levels rising. Mm-hmm. So essentially when you put energy into molecules, for those of you who haven't listened to that episode yet, they move around more and get more and more energy. And if it's liquid, they might even have enough energy to turn into the gas form of that molecule. And they have so much pressure on them, so much pressure on them, so much pressure on them that eventually the thing holding them wants to burst open because they're moving around, putting a lot of pressure. It's like if you're holding a kid that's wiggling around a lot, at some point <laughs> you're going to just give up and let the kid free. You know, Right, right. The other day I was doing tickle jail <laughs> with your son uh-huh. <laughs> and he would be all thrashing around. And I'm like, this is kind of a dangerous game for me and oh, my yeah. glasses. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of a dangerous game for popcorn too. You're totally. putting energy into it and things are moving around, moving around. And so it's pushing out and eventually the things on the inside are able to get out. Okay. But we're kind of, so that's a good overview, but we're kind of missing that also as we're heating up the popcorn, something's happening to the starch too. Mm. Is the starch inside, is it a solid? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a solid and as it heats up, it doesn't really lose its structure. Um, I guess Joey asked, is there a chemical change? Mm-hmm. But I think a better way to think of it is a physical change where it just sort of gets melty. I've heard, I try to look more into exactly what was happening on the molecular level to the starch, but the best thing I could find in peer reviewed journals was either that it would get molten or gelatinous. Okay. So normally if you squish a a kernel, it's hard. You can't, it doesn't give a lot, Mm -hmm. but as you heat it up and the water vapor inside the kernel is turning into gaseous molecules and it's getting warm and warmer and warmer in there, the starch becomes some, one of the scientists like likened it to like a, a ball of dough. Mm. It's like, it still has structure. It's still one unit, but it's squishy and movable. Yeah. So we're reaching a critical temperature where the water vapor, the water has turned into gas. It's moving around a lot. It's putting pressure on the cellulose situation. Mm-hmm. And there's molten starch happening and eventually your kernel will start to crack and then pressure's going to try to find a way to release through that crack. And as the air is rushing out, also the starch will come with it. And so the starch is coming out also in that same moment. It's, you know, the air is rushing out with it, which is why it gets kind of aerated and the Uh. volume goes up. But as soon as it's free from that, tiny pressure cooker, then it cools down because the pressure is part of what's keeping that temperature hot. Sort of like if you have a lid on a pot versus when you take the lid off. Right. 
So it cools down almost immediately enough to become solid foamy starch that we know as popcorn. Got it. And I guess that kind of makes sense. I think about like pouring coffee, for instance, like you, I like have my coffee at like almost boiling or the water almost at boiling when I'm brewing it. Mm -hmm. But then just by pouring it, it's already cooling down just a lot. Yes. Just by being exposed to the air and not being in a closed container anymore. Mm -hmm. And, and then, so it, it's like pre pressure obviously is not part of that situation quite as much, but um, the temperature, as soon as pressure is released, yes. being able to like get to a state where it's not this molten whatever anymore um, kind of makes sense. But it is crazy how fast that happens. I know it's, and that was one of the people who studied the popcorn slowed everything down. And I have some fun facts from his research uh, that I'll give you at the end, but he slowed everything down and it, and looked at every stage and actually found that the popping doesn't come from the kernel breaking, which you'd think, cause like in coffee, basically the same thing happens mm -hmm. where it heats up and it cracks open, but you don't have that starch in the middle. Right. And you hear the crack yep. usually. Yep. So you don't really hear the crack in the popcorn kernel, they would, they like were able to slow it down into the, I don't know if it was like milliseconds or what, I can't remember now off the top of my head, but they saw the crack and the starch start to come out and then the, heard the pop after the crack had already happened. Mm. So the pop is the air getting out. It's not the kernel breaking. Uh, Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's crazy. And you'd have to slow down so much to know that. It's also funny because like they, when people talk about in sort of the home coffee roasting space, they talk about popcorn a lot as like a, you listen for the crack, just like with popcorn, hearing popcorn pop. It's not exactly the same sound. It's a little different, mm -hmm. but they use that as an example of like, listen for this happening yeah. or whatever, but I pretty, mean, pretty different. It's a, yeah, it's, I could see that analogy, but technically if you could slow it way, 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 way down, the pop isn't from the, outer shell breaking. It's from something else. Interesting. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I'm going to give you a little um, teaser for your fun fact at the end. Okay. Also from that person's research. You know how sometimes when popcorn pops, it jumps? Yes. And you'd think that would be from the air all coming out. Uh-huh. That's not really what happens. Okay. Okay. So just, I'm just going to leave that for you. Okay. Okay. So let me, uh, sorry, that was a little bit of a tangent. So let me get back here to where we were. So we essentially talked about how the water vapor inside this closed container heats up, heats up, heats up. And while it's hard happening, this starch starts to melt and get this molten gelatinous thing mm -hmm. that I couldn't find as much satisfying research as I wanted. And there's sort of a critical point where the popcorn can't handle the cellulose outside of the popcorn can't handle all that pressure anymore. And so it cracks open, the starch spills out. As it's spilling out, air is coming out with it and it cools back down. And oh, I did think of a good analogy for why it sort of expands out, the starch does, mm -hmm. and is able to take in like, it seems like it gets air bubbles in it, you know, to make it a little bit more foamy and not that hard compact that it is inside. Right. And I thought of the elephant's toothpaste experiment mm. and, and the Mentos and Diet Coke experiment. Yeah. In both of those cases, bubbles are being generated and as they're leaving, <laughs> as the air is rushing out, so is the stuff that is sort of capturing the bubbles. Yeah. So it's not just like, oh, bubbles are rushing out. It's like bubbles are rushing out and they're bringing Diet Coke with them yeah. and they're bringing, you know, everything else with out with them. So I feel like it, that's a similar thing that you can imagine is like, okay, the air is rushing out, but it's bringing this melted starch out with it. And it just so happens then when the melted starch gets out, it like freezes in its bubbly state. Mm. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Yeah. It's also like, it still keeps being so crazy to me that I'm like, when you said that, how is it foamy and not so hard and compact? And I'm like, oh, right. It was fitting in that tiny little space and it was really hard. Mm -hmm. And now it's way, it takes way more volume. Mm -hmm. So- of course there's something that has changed. Of course a lot of air has been able to integrate itself into there. Yeah. Because otherwise how would it be taking up way more space now? Yeah. But still be solid again, right? So it's yeah, like- Yeah, because it's, it's not as solid, I can't feel like, as it yeah. was before. It's like squishy. Yeah. And you can squish it down into a more compact state. So it's yeah. like, oh yeah, there must be air in it. Right. Just like whipped cream too. Also, you know, we're like trapping air in this structure. Yeah. 
So that was helpful for me to visualize. That is speculation. I just really want to clarify that is like from an informed chemistry point of view, how I speculate that it fluffs up. I could not find, it seems like people are focusing more on the mechanics of the pop and less on the, from what I could find in the chemistry sphere, less on the starch and how it's expanding. But that was my interpretation. It was even hard to confirm what molten versus gelatinous was. So um, I just want to clarify that. I, I like to give you good factual information. And whenever I speculate, even though it's speculation from the mind of a chemist, it's important still to qualify that. Right, right. So that's your first chemistry lesson in a new application yeah. is really thermal expansion and then sort of the air bubbles being trapped in a matrix kind of. Okay. So a good episode to listen to is one I already said, the climate, uh, the sea level rise episode, but also the tire episode mm, would be a good one. Right, right. That was one where Jam blew my socks off <laughs> and guessed the whole episode and I didn't even have to teach him. <laughs> so what if it was like, not only that, but like somehow I taught you something you didn't know. <laughs> I was like, you bring the topic. And I'm like, actually. I mean, you do that a lot with the coffee and stuff. That's true. And film. I feel like there's a lot of times you teach me, but that's just true. not chemistry. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It'd be funny if <laughs> somehow things went that way. Or like, yeah. And then James surprised me because he knew something about chemistry I didn't know <laughs> and explained it to me or whatever. So especially something that simple about like the tires. <laughs> anyway, yeah, those are all. Yeah, that makes sense. Those are all like related to this mm -hmm. in different ways. Okay. So now let's talk about what makes popcorn special because okay. no, all corn does not pop. Only popcorn pops. And it's because it has that strong cellulose layer. Mm. Other, other corns, I guess, don't have as strong of a layer there. And they okay. also might not have the right ratio of water and starch. You have to have like exactly 13.5 to 14% water inside your kernel. So is it a specific like species of corn? It, from what I gathered is a variety of popcorn species. Okay. But yes, it's a, it's a type of corn that has all of the necessary ingredients to be popped essentially. Okay. Okay. So and oh, that cellulose layer is called a pericarp, which sounds like a Pokemon to me. Yeah, it is. What What is the Pokemon it sounds like? Magic carp. Oh, yeah. Okay. And kind of like Poliwhirl or something, like pericarp. Pericarp. Yeah. I, feel I was like, like, is that? I haven't played Pokemon, but as soon as you said that sounds like a Pokemon, I was like, yeah, it totally does. I don't know why. Yeah. It does, but yeah. Okay. It sounds like that. Yeah. So I just called it the cellulose layer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's what surround that surrounding shell is mostly made up of cellulose. And cellulose you've probably heard of before. Do you remember where you've heard it in school? I'm like pretty confident you have. Cellulose. Um Is it okay if you can't remember? I mean, yeah, I feel like I've heard it a ton. Why can't I think of exactly the, the Maybe plants? Description. Yeah, definitely only with plants that I can think of. Um, is it anything that, that's part of making up the cell wall of plants? Yes. Okay. That's what it is. So cellulose is a common polymer, again, which a polymer is, there's lots of polymers in nature. Everything's a polymer is my joke, which isn't like really true, but it kind of feels like it sometimes on this show. Yeah, I mean, it feels like every other episode you're like, this blah, blah, blah is basically a polymer. And it's like, okay. <laughs> so Jam's a beautiful definition of polymers is a molecule that's made up of a bunch of molecules. So it just kind of has repeating units. So the analogy I'm going to use for that today is, did you ever play that game like Red Rover, Red Rover? Yes, I did. And the kids would try to break through. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the kids trying to break through, that's a water molecule trying to get out. Okay. And the cellulose layer is a bunch of repeating units that are all one long chain. Okay. The kids holding hands. They're just repeating units, all one long chain. Okay. So we have this cellulose layer and it seems like, I mean, it doesn't seem like a, an x-ray crystallographer looked at the structure via x-ray of the cellulose. And what they found was it wasn't just one layer of the polymer. It would crystallize. Ah. And we've talked about crystal structures before, especially on the glass episode. 
where some things that are in their solid state, sometimes it's kind of amorphous where there's not really a good internal structure. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they line up really nicely. And even things that aren't gemstones can have a nice crystalline internal structure. Yeah. So glass doesn't have that and neither does ibuprofen. But if you sometimes let your ibuprofen get old, you can see it looks all sparkly. Right. Is because it's crystallizing. Okay. So it turns out that within the shell, there's some crystal structure and there's some amorphous areas. And the crystal structures, the way they described it, I really liked it. So I copied this for you and then I'll give you an analogy. So this is a quote from the paper. It contains both crystalline and amorphous regions. The crystalline state adopts a sheet-like structure in which the chains are packed in parallel modes. Okay. And those sheets are held together by a series of what? Can you think of what things would hold two molecules together? What things? Like a thing or like a... Force. A force. An intermolecular force? Yes. <laughs> a specific kind. It's hydrogen bond. So the okay, strongest okay. intermolecular force. Got it. So that right there is another episode, another lesson that you've learned. So the episode about glass will teach you about the crystalline materials and snowflakes. I think we talked about crystal and then yes. there too. Yes. And then hydrogen bonds, intermolecular forces, we talk about a lot mm-hmm. um, all throughout. But I think probably the first one was soap. Right. How does soap clean your hands? So... The way I thought of it was kind of like um, (laughs) if you were playing that Red Rover game and instead of just one row of kids that you had to break through, it's like, and another row, and another row, and another row, and another row. And they've all lined up Uh to where nothing's going to be able to get through. No kid is going to be able to run through all those arms and break through all those layers because it's so crystalline and solid. And it would be an even another layer to represent the hydrogen bonds if you started to like... I don't know how you could do this, but like tie between the (laughs) rows of kids. Uh (laughs) I was like, would you have kids that like hold hands this way, like parallel and uh, perpendicular? I don't know. That's where the analogy kind of break down was the hydrogen bonds. But I liked that visual because I feel like the water molecules are putting all this pressure and trying to escape. But the structure is so strong that you're not going to be able to get through all of this lined up. Yeah. So that was how I pictured it in my mind. So what this person found was actually that the corn popcorn varieties that had a better pop rate had more crystalline structure. So okay. if it was more crystalline structure, you'd be more likely to hold all the water that you need to hold in. There wouldn't be those imperfections in the shell for it to escape out. And that would force the pop and the starch to come out and you'd get a popped kernel. Mm. But the ones with less perfection on or less crystalline, I guess they were more likely to have imperfections and you'd get a lower pop rate. So the range was like 47% pop or like over 90% pop. Interesting. I know. Huh. And so they talked about using that to possibly crossbreed and get more varieties of popcorn to have that stronger shell. But that's part of what explains why sometimes popcorn kernels don't pop. Right. So they, they have imperfections on a molecular level that allow the air, the moisture to escape. So it doesn't put the pressure so... So it might not always be that you just didn't leave it long enough or the difficulty of not wanting to burn the rest of what you've mm-hmm. left. It could be that those kernels weren't going to pop anyway. They might not have popped uh, anyway. Oh, wow. I never even thought about that. I know. I always said, oh, this is all the potential that didn't get, we didn't get out of this batch of popcorn yeah. or whatever. And like, this is just lost, you know. But it's possible that it was, there was no escaping that. Yeah. Interesting. And I guess you really can't know that until you tried it, until yeah. you've tried like there would be no point in imperfections going to happen, but they're all, every kernel is so cheap that it's like, just throw a bunch in there and it's going to be, if we can get to a high enough percentage, good enough. I will say they said, the person who studied this said that they can like break teeth, mess up fillings. There's a few other things they were like. I, I kind of, I guess I thought they were just annoying, you know, <laughs> but yeah. it was like, they actually negatively impact dental health if you're eating popcorn and there are unpopped kernels in there. Yeah. So we want, since it's a healthy, healthy-ish, I guess, snack option that is very popular, we want the least amount of those possible so that it's not negatively impacting, like cracking teeth, yeah, 
breaking fillings or I think there's one other thing. So I was like, oh, oh, causing cho- they can cause choking. Even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why we don't give our kids popcorn. That M- makes sense. M has I don't know if there's like a uh, AAP thing like American Academy of Pediatrics or or if she just has this is like a rule of thumb, but um, she always tells our son he can't have it till he's four. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like once you're four, then you can have because he'll ask for it and stuff. When we're, when we're he did eating talk it. about it today. Mm-hmm. So he knows about it. He wants it. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he doesn't know about it. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so um, just okay, yeah. That so that was your whole lesson. Sorry, I got off. I got a, on a tangent. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so that was your whole lesson. So there's lots of different little lessons within it. So I feel like you can approach it however you see fit. Okay. But I was going to give you a chance to give that, explain that back to me. And then I have a lot of fun facts about the popcorn. Okay. Awesome. So I did, I guess I sort of explained the first part, the high level view or whatever, because you oh, yeah. quizzed me to see if I could guess it or whatever. Um, oh yeah, that's true. So I guess some of the things since then, other than just the like exciting of the molecules, the starch and the water and the air that's in there already, that's that's wanting to expand and get out and creating pressure to bust out of the cellulose. Um, I guess some of the stuff that you talk about since then is it has such a strong layer because there's a bunch of layers and it's crystallized Mm -hmm. instead of being like other cell walls, for instance, that are made out of similar stuff would be permeable in some way and wouldn't try be trying to be this like perfectly sealed deal. But in this case, it's a bunch of layers and it's crystallized. And I don't know. I don't think it's like a bunch just to clarify. Okay. I don't think oh. it's a bunch of cell walls. I think it just right. is cellulose that's it's cellulose and a few other things making up that outer shell. Okay. You mentioned cell walls and I do think cell walls are semi permeable. Right. But in this case we're talking about pure cellulose on the pure well not quite pure but mostly <laughs> cellulose yeah. not I don't think it's in cell wall form right, right. but I will say that's bio- biology and a little bit beyond my scope right 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 but it's the it is the key to this whole deal is that because it's such a good layer of mostly cellulose mm-hmm. that is crystallized hard not permeable unless there's a, a defect or whatever mm-hmm. on them it allows the pressure of the starch and the water to increase to a point that it is able to burst out and create that, you know, it gets molten enough and then bursts open. And then immediately, because the pressure has been released, it cools back down and goes back to a foamy solid or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, if it wasn't for having a really good hard layer like that, it wouldn't be able to pop in the first place. Yes. Um, Because the pressure might be able to come out in some other tiny, you know, microscopic hole somewhere in there. Yeah. And let's see, you also shared about how the sound actually has to do with, Oh, did you actually answer that one yet? Or did you tease that one? No, that's just it. The, the sound actually comes when the pressure is released. Not when, or like when the oh, air yeah, comes right, right. out, when the air comes out, Yeah. Oh, the, the, the popping up of the, that's, kernel, the, that's the one you I haven't teased. shared. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the sound is the, not the cracking open of the the cellulose layer, but the mm-hmm. um, air rushing in or things out. rushing out. Things rushing out. Things that rushing. does it. Okay. Yep. The way they described it was similar to the way a champagne bottle sounds when it pops. Okay. It's like the cork goes and you hear that characteristic pop. It's like, oh, the air is able to get out. Right. So, but I bet right. if you slowed that really far down, it's not technically the cork coming out that's making the noise. It's the air rushing after it. Got it. And that's so funny. It makes me think of this. Um, have you watched the show Succession at all? <laughs> no, I haven't. Okay. If you're one of our listeners who watched this, it made me think of like the sound and air, obviously very linked together, mm-hmm. right? But one of the um, lines that I've loved from that show is someone says something, says something to this character like, but you said blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I said, you know, words, what are words? Just complicated airflow. <laughs> Basically as a way of kind of shrugging off what he said. But I'm like, but that is true. I that mean, is true. Complicated 
movement of air and, <laughs> and our stuff, vocal cords and our vocal cords all kinds of things moving around in a very complicated way i um, think we talked about that in the helium episodes yes we did that's right um, that's true so what am i missing um, i don't think you're missing anything okay i don't have an analogy you had several that helped me already i thought of another analogy while you were talking okay i think that in construction they use a foam for insulation that is similarly in a liquid state and then mm-hmm. it comes out of being under pressure and expands and immediately hardens. Yes. Yes. Yep. Is that true? That's yeah. true. Yeah. We have some of that in a part of our deck that they, the previous owners just used to like fill a hole instead of doing <laughs> something else. But, uh, but yes. I, that, so that's another analogy. Yeah. That's crazy. That stuff's not edible though. No, probably not. But probably a polymer that's under pressure. Yeah. And it then the air is allowed to rush out, aerating it. Yeah. And there's something that happens when it, it's not heated, I'm guessing. So there's something that happens when it gets out that allows it to harden or right. activate. Or right. Something. So probably similar technology. Yeah. Interesting. I just, one thing I really liked about this is there was so much chemistry and a lot of chemistry we've touched on before, but also it's like when you, when I went to the extension websites where they're explaining, you know, the difference between corn and uh, popcorn, mm-hmm. they essentially said popcorn pops. So that's what makes it different. But if you then look at the molecular level, it's like the crystalline structure of a cellulose shell is actually what makes popcorn pop. Right, right. Plus a good ratio of water and starch. Can I ask you this, which, which may have been said in one of the, the resources that you read, but you might remember it, so... Sorry, but mm-hmm. how hot are we talking that the, oh, is that one of your fun facts? Yes. Okay, nice. <laughs> and I'm like, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, it's getting super hot. It's busting out of this very hard shell and then rapidly cooling, but you used the word molten earlier. Yeah. Which other than like molten lava cakes, <laughs> I think typically only applies when something's quite hot. Also gelatinous, you know. Gelatinous. I feel like that can go either way to get to Well, I will say I thought about this in the context of microwaves, which we also have a microwave episode, and that would specifically activate the water molecules. Mm. So I'm guessing it doesn't make the surrounding air as hot, but the pressure from the water molecules increasing the temperature probably also increases the temperature of the starch. But the temperature they said in there is a resource where they they looked at how much popped at this temperature and this temperature and this temperature, and there was a jump Mm -hmm. from one temperature to the next. That was like 15%. Okay. Okay. So they said at 170 degrees Celsius, like less than 80%, Mm -hmm. I think it was around 75 of the popcorn popped, but at 180, 96% of the popcorn had popped. Wow. And then another one said 177 degrees Celsius. So 177 degrees Celsius is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Okay. So 350 degrees Fahrenheit for our listeners in the States and for everybody else, 177 Celsius. Okay. That is the, the ideal temperature for popcorn popping. That was one of my fun facts. And so that'd be external, correct? Like the amount of heat sort of in the, the environment the kernels need to be in. External for, I think, external for the oven and the stove. Okay. But I think... If we're talking microwave, I don't know that we would say that because it's right, like right. It's not microwaves work by activating the water molecules. Yeah. So I'm hesitant to say that yes across the board, but yeah, I think the ambient temperature. I don't okay. think it said what the temperature inside was. Okay. Because that's what I was curious about, but I was thinking, I'm thinking, would it? What would it? Is there a way that it could be hotter than that? Because oh, for of, sure. Because of the fact that it's like contained in there for so long. Yes. But how much would we even be talking? I don't know. Wow. Sorry, that's a good question. I'll see if I can find it for the next Q&R. Okay. Will you submit that at chemfreelife.com? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was a good question. I'll look and see what if it says what the temperature is on the inside. Okay. Okay, so the next thing is, um, I already told you about the popping noise being from the water vapor escape. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. I kind of had trouble sleeping lately, so. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> um, so the next thing is 
the air escaping might be, you're like, oh, it's a little explosion that propels the popcorn forward, right? That's probably what you think. Right. Not true. Okay. The first kind of crack that happens, um, it seems like if the popcorn kernel sitting on the ground and the first crack kind of happens, there's like almost a, like a leg or a spring of starch that comes out. And the force of that starch is more the thing that propels it forward. Got it. So instead of having a, the, the people who study this are physicists, physicists, they do physics. Yeah. Physicists. And I think also they study is like the movement of things. Mm -hmm. And so they said it moves more like a gymnast and less like, you know, just like an explosion. Right. They compared it to plants that use the pressure buildup and explosion versus like a gymnast springing up. Uh And it mimicked more of the gymnast and they likened the first little bit of starch coming out to a leg. Got it. Okay. Isn't that weird? That is like weird, a spring. But it kind of makes sense based on the memory I have of just like tried, trying to get those slow-mo videos. Mm-hmm. There's like a gracefulness to it. Yes. You know, where it's like it it explodes and then it has like, it'll be like oftentimes spinning. Yep. You know, as if it's like just kind of tried to do a flip or in, mm-hmm. in, usually several, I guess. Yeah. But where it's like something pushes it as the, I guess that first leg of starch comes out and it springs up and flips and a little, a little bit of oils flying off of it, you know? And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. I like that you took it from an artistic approach. They did something so similar, but just in a way more advanced, like way more frames of the camera, uh-huh. able to look at every stage of the movement. That's so cool. And I'd love to see that. I think they even did the equations for it, which at that point, my brain is like, no. Yeah. But I thought that was really interesting. That's cool. Um, I already told you 13 to 13.5 to 14% of the water is what needs to be in the kernel for popping to be achieved. Okay. And um, I already told you about the temperature. So the last fun fact is popcorn is considered by many people to be a healthy food. Mm-hmm. Some people think starch, carbohydrates, not great. Right. But here's what it does have going for it. Okay. It's a whole grain. Okay. It has nutrients like vitamins, minerals. Awesome. And it's a good source of fiber and antioxidants that prevent cancer. Uh-huh. There's a lot of polyphenols that help mitigate the radicals and other bad things that make cancer happen. Wow. And go listen to our antioxidant episode. That's awesome. That's cool. So it is, I feel like I think of popcorn like chips, mm-hmm. but it actually has a lot more nutritional value than chips, especially if you're cooking it from the kernel at home, so you know exactly what's on it. Right. And if you use an oil that's got like healthy fats in it, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it's probably low calorie if you're using oils with healthy fats, but that are good for your, um, what it, cause isn't it that the saturated fats, the unsaturated fats will wash away the saturated fats. Ooh, I'm pretty sure. Good question. Anyway, that, so that's better for you. Uh-huh. So if you're using like olive oil or canola oil, that's better. Right. right. Than butter. For right. example, and um, you've got the fiber and you have antioxidants. So there's a nice. lot of things. It's kind of like it reminded me of the difference between like sugar and maple syrup. It's like they're both sweeteners. They're both high in calorie and they're yeah. both probably not like the healthiest option. But there's a lot of nutrients yeah. in maple syrup that white sugar doesn't have. And similarly, there's a lot of nutrients in popcorn that maybe other salty, buttery snacks don't have. Right. And you can make it even healthier if you include nutrients that are good for you, like in olive oil. Right, right. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. I'd heard that. It's one of the things where like, it's such a tasty snack. It's so tasty. And of course, we often associate it with like movies and, you know, candy as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm just kind of like, is it healthier? I mean, like, that's not, not the way I'm eating it. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Sometimes I was like, am I just eating air? <laughs> yeah. But I guess, yeah, that's probably part of it. It's less dense than other mm-hmm. things. and. Yeah, when we make it at home, we we do canola oil and salt. Yeah, that's, that's it. what we do too. And it, I mean, to me, it is great. I mean, I, I it doesn't feel like I'm giving anything up. And then I'm like, okay, it probably is pretty great. Maybe I should just stick with that instead of all the other. I love crunchy, salty snacks. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should just stick with popcorn. And I will say, every once in a while, I'll put some butter on it. Uh huh. Just if I'm doing like a movie night or something, and it, even just a little bit of butter gets mm-hmm. that buttery vibe. Mm-hmm. You know. You know, what I like to do is on the stove top 
you know, the way we do it is like we put the kernels in to test when they pop, it's hot enough mm-hmm. and put oil in, but the butter can burn so easily. What I do is I put the butter in when I put the kernels in, not when I put the oil in. I put the butter in after it's out yeah. and toss it in and the that, butter. That works pretty well too. I, I have a hard time getting it distributed. And so I realized if I did it right then, then it won't burn, but it'll get over a lot of the pretty distributed across a lot of the kernels. So Smart. Anyway, so those are our butter techniques. It's fun. That's fun that the listeners are getting a little peek into like a niche <laughs> part of our life. Yeah, kind of like they know about cast iron, they know about coffee, but yeah. they didn't really know that we're like, oh, we love to make popcorn at yeah. home. Yeah. That is a love that we share. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thanks for doing this episode with me. It really, um, I'll go ahead and share my semi fun fact is just that it's been kind of a hard week in Texas. We had um, a pretty devastating uh, act of violence really close by and I had been pretty down and it's always a bright spot in my life to be able to learn about the world and then share about the world. And so, yeah, I'm just really glad that we were able to do this episode. Me too. It really, I think it lightened up my heart a little after kind of a hard, uh, hard week for my mental health. Yeah. Nothing like a little bit of something that not only you enjoy a lot and are passionate about, but is social and community oriented and stuff like that. So, and yeah, I think whenever hard things happen like that, I try to reflect on what I'm thankful for. And I'm really thankful for this podcast and I'm really thankful for the way that we have such a good relationship with our listeners. And yeah, so I think, um, is it cheating to make this episode as my fun thing for the week? I have lots of other fun things, but um, this is this is kind of pulled me out of a funk after that um, s- scary situation this weekend in Allen. I don't think that's cheating. I mean, I, I think it's a good <laughs> one because the one I was planning on sharing, I can't, it's not super long, but it's just that we got to go visit family. Like you mentioned earlier, I was out of town, mm-hmm. visit some family in Indiana. And that's kind of my de facto one, the biggest thing we've done recently. Um and a bunch of my wife's family got to meet our younger son for the first time, which is really good. Lucky for them. He's really cute. <laughs> and we got to um, attend my niece, my oldest niece on that side, her wedding, and then also meet the newest, youngest niece on that side of the family too. So a bunch of family stuff all at once. So we can fun. here, I'll throw another one in that's less related to the show and say, when you got back, we hadn't seen each other in a long time. And mm-hmm. I normally get to, you know, hang out with the kids every week and get to hang out with uh, Jam and his wife regularly. Like they're some of our closest friends. And it was, I was like, it's been a long time since I've seen y'all. So we share a wedding anniversary. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I was like, hey, it's your anniversary. Do y'all want to go on a date? And what we ended up doing is, we stayed over at their house in the guest room and then got to go on a nice walk to a coffee shop the next morning. And it was a really good morning. So yeah, that was a, that's a fun one that involved both of us too. And Definitely. that's how I knew they went to the movies. Yep. <laughs> and because she creeps on us and makes sure she knows our every moves. I mean, I do have Jam's location on Find My Friends. <laughs> There's a time when I didn't have a car and I rode my bike everywhere and I shared my location with anyone who was interested. So I was yep. like... The more people who had my location, the more likely somebody knew where I was. Yep. If something, if I get into an accident and I'm stranded with my bike somewhere, yeah, somebody will come looking for me. Yeah, I'd rather some human beings that I know have my location than some corporation I don't know. That's like how I feel about it. Yeah, you know what I mean, I'm like, I'd rather you have it. They'd be like, hey, I can't get a hold of so and so. I was like, oh, I have his location. I can make sure we can <laughs> make sure he's okay or whatever. Yeah. yeah, but obviously, big topic. People have feelings about it, but. I'd rather, have, I don't care. <laughs> I'd rather have my friends know yeah. where I'm at. Uh, well, thanks for teaching us. And thanks for sharing a couple of extra um, fun things. And also thanks for watching the kids so we could go on a date night. That was super, You're welcome. That was super fun. It was fun for us too. I was planning on sharing the details of that in my next fun thing because I, uh, I have a hard thing. Oh, I'm I stole of stuff. it from you. But I might do that then. I might give details about it next time. So okay. we'll see. Who knows? Who knows? You might something new might have happened by then. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maybe we'll watch them again. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for teaching us, and thank you, Joey, 
for sending this question in and probably, um, and also our friend's daughter yes. for asking questions about it too. And maybe somebody else who's also asked this. And but, all of y'all for, for caring about chemistry and popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have a question about something in your life that you're wondering, is that chemistry? Could chemistry explain this thing? The answer is no, probably not. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's probably yes. And please reach out to us on our website at chemforyourlife.com. That's chem, F-O-R, your life com to share your thoughts and ideas. If you'd like to help us keep our show going and contribute to cover the cost of making it, go to patreon.com slash chem for your life or tap the link in our show notes or the description to join our super cool community of patrons. If you're not able to do that, you can still help us by subscribing on your favorite podcast app, subscribing on YouTube, and rating and writing a review on Apple Podcasts. That also helps us to share chemistry with even more people. This episode is made... Nope. <laughs> This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. And Jam Robinson is our producer. This episode was made possible by our financial supporters over on Patreon. It means so much to us that you want to help make chemistry accessible to even more people, including our new supporter, Nellie. So um, the rest of those supporters are Avishai B, Bree M, Brian K, Chris and Claire S, Chelsea B, Derek L, Emerson W., Hunter R, Jacob T, Christina G, Lynn S, Melissa P, Nicole C, Stephen B, Shadow, Timothy P, and Venus R. Thank you again for all you do to make Chemistry for Your Life happen. And if you'd like to learn more about today's chemistry lesson, check out the references for this episode in our show notes or in the description of the video. Yay, popcorn! <laughs> <laughs>